I had an appointment. Pardon me. I have an appointment. With that doc there. 15 minutes ago. Remember yesterday, or was it the day before, we were talking about how nice it is that someone, that, that a customer honored my appointment and kicked another driver out of the dock because he was in my dock and they honored the appointment time and that doesn't always happen? Well, this is one of those times when it doesn't happen. We made an appointment for 9 a.m. here, the second time at this place. And uh, we get here and their dock is completely packed. They have at least six of these straight trucks all over here that need to be loaded yet and unloaded. And uh, someone in the office had made our appointment and I guess not told the guys in the back or there's a miscommunication or somebody's lying, or I don't know. I don't wanna say they're lying, I don't wanna accuse them of that, but something went wrong and they're not ready for me. And it sounds like they're not going to be ready for me for like another two hours. In two hours, I was supposed to be closer to Montreal already. I got a pretty big delivery to deliver here. So that's how my day started today. Had an appointment, but uh, the appointment wasn't honored. But we're gonna make it a good day anyway. This might be considered might be considered one of the more frustrating parts of the job. It's nice to have appointments because then, especially when I have multi-drop loads, because I have another appointment this afternoon at noon in Montreal. I'm not gonna make that appointment now. So because one customer didn't stick to the appointment that we had made, now all of the customers after them also have to suffer or be rearranged and I may not even be able to deliver my second load until tomorrow now or we may have to make a new appointment altogether but you know that's that's trucking most of all that is going in here it's gonna take them a little while to unload it once I get in there. So if I only get in there in about two hours, I'm probably going to be here for at least four hours. But that's okay. It is what it is. I'm not, I'm not too upset about it. It's nothing I can do about it. It's just morning time here and I'm, uh, wish I would've gotten a coffee for myself. Maybe I'll have a nap. That might be nice. Well, there is a silver lining to this gloomy cloud this morning. Someone just came out here to talk to me. Oh, talk to me and let me know. Oh, they're emailing me right now. What are they saying? Keep us posted. Uh, I, I just let the, the people back home know, the load gods, let them know what was going on. I wanted them to know that I was probably gonna be late for my next appointment. You always gotta let them know as soon as possible if they need to rearrange things on their end make phone calls or whatever they need to do over there, at least they know as soon as possible that you're probably going to be late and it's not your fault. You need to tell them even if it is your fault, just so you know. Always just keep them updated what's going on. They like that. So they, they called in or emailed in here and someone came out and talked to me right away and said that they're, they're scrambling and moving stuff around here so that I can get in a dock as soon as possible. So you may not have to be here for two hours. One can only hope. I have a feeling it's gonna be two hours though, but hey, that's just that's just my feelings. That's just my feeling. Maybe they'll surprise me. It's not like it's their fault. Uh, I don't know whose fault you'd place this on. It sounds like it was just miscommunication from our office to their office to their docks and receivers. Uh, but I do know like they do load a lot of trucks here in the morning. This is what happened last time already too. They do They do a lot of loading in the morning and they wanna do their unloading later in the day but I guess they must have made an appointment for us to unload in the morning and now it's sort of confused their whole, their docks. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. 
I'm just doing what I'm told. And I'm being told to wait. So hurry up and wait. Here we go. So it's been three hours. That's all I have to say. <laughs> it's now noon. I'm supposed to be in Montreal right now. I'm still in Ottawa. Still haven't even started unloading. And they're going to take a few hours to unload me. I'm not going to get out of here until like 3 o'clock, I bet. So it stays like this when I don't know what the point of making an appointment is if they're not going to uh, honor the appointments. Like, I understand they're busy here. But uh, how is that big of a scheduling error possible twice in a row? It is what it is, I guess. We'll figure it out. Nothing I can do about it. So we'll just keep waiting. And then once I, once I do get a door, this guy right there, he's in my door. I've got to, well, I've got to get that guy to move. And I've got to drive in there and I've got to blindside it in there. It's a gong show. And they're getting frustrated in there. I don't know if they're, I, well, they're obviously overwhelmed. And uh, I just went there to just look around and see how many trucks were in front of me yet. And uh, you could tell they're getting pretty frustrated. So whoever planned out their day here, whoever does the planning, the load planning, really dropped the ball again. But me, could be worse, I guess. There's somebody out here who will not stop honking. You hear that? I don't know what they want. Well, I did it. It's a nice blindside back. I actually did it almost in one swoop. I was actually pretty surprised with myself. So I had to back in around this corner here into the dock here. So we did get into the dock at 1220, just in time for their lunch break. So they're gonna go take their lunch break. I mean, I don't blame them. We get hungry, we're human. So after they get back, probably around one o'clock, I'm guessing they're gonna start unloading me. It's gonna take at least an hour or two. I'm guessing I'll be out of here by three and then run over to Montreal. I'm not gonna get unloaded today yet. I'm gonna have to do my last delivery tomorrow morning and then my reload got pushed back from this afternoon till tomorrow after I unload. My reload's in Montreal as well. It's in Laval, just a different suburb. So probably pick that up tomorrow around like 10 I guess in the morning and then we start headed home and then it's 2300 kilometers to home so that's two really long days of driving or two and a half days of normal driving I'll probably do the normal driving option we'll see what happens how fast they want it there uh, it has to be delivered next Monday the 5th so I got lots of time to get back it's just the longer I take to get back the less time I get to spend at home I want to go home so We'll see, if I get out of there by 10, let's see, 23 hours of, of just driving, plus traffic stops, plus a break, plus night, that's what, 24 hours, 44, 48 hours. It'll be over 48 hours, so if I leave here at 10, I could probably get home, That's because what's today? Today's Tuesday, tomorrow's Wednesday. No, today's Wednesday, tomorrow's Thursday. Ah, Thursday, so it'll be Friday, Saturday. I would be home Saturday sometime. I'll probably be home Saturday evening. It's now quarter to two in the afternoon. That's all that's left. So Quebec has to do everything different. 
everything, all of their signs, even their construction cones, everything is different. First of all, it's all in French, but you can see their stop lights up ahead here. They're sideways and they're also uh, made for colorblind people. You see there's two stop lights on either end of it that are square. So two red square stop lights and then I believe the, the orange light is triangle and then the green light is circle. I believe that's how it is so that colorblind people know what light is on, right? So that's pretty neat and cool for Quebec, but they have to do everything different. I'm surprised their school buses aren't like bright pink or a different color than yellow or, or whatever this color is here. I'm surprised they use the same color as the English world. But that's what makes Quebec unique, right? I'm not saying it's a bad thing that they do everything different. It's actually pretty interesting that they uh, maintain such a unique presence in the country. Yeah, they're a part of Canada, but are they really? Like legally, yeah, their taxes go to Ottawa, but they're very different here than anywhere else in the country. Different language, different systems of roadways, different cultures. There was a war at one point and uh, you know, they decided to do everything together. I'm, I'm kind of glad they did because we're stronger together, but if you come to Canada, don't forget to stop by Quebec and bring some kind of translator because they only speak French in a lot of areas. Some areas still speak English, but the first language is French and you'll need to be able to read the road signs. So they said if I can get there before 5 p.m. they'll unload me today. The time is now 4.11 and I'm one kilometer away. Three minutes according to Google here. Today's just been one of those days, man. It's been one of those days, just everything seems to be disorganized, taking more time than it should. I did get my second delivery done and it's my final delivery, so that's good. However, I'm not going to be able to uh, reload until tomorrow morning now, so I'm trying to find a place to park. Keep to the right on all 13 the airport, Mirabelle and Man. Take the entrance to the right in 610 meters. Trying to navigate my way through Frenchland, it's not always easy. So we're gonna get in here. We're gonna try and find a truck stop in Laval. There's not many. There's one Petro Pass that has like the six parking meters. spots. Take the entrance to the right on all 13 North Airport, Maribel. Oh, Quebec, you and your weird ways of doing things. They've gotta be different. They call these freeways autoroutes, and their on-ramps are even worse than Ontario's. Make no sense. There's no way to actually get up to speed by the time you hit the traffic because of that. They have these weird on-ramps and bridges that are crumbling. But that's all right. Hey, it looks like we're going through a tunnel though. That's fun. Montreal is supposed to be a city of culture. A nightlife city, you know? A party city. I've never spent a lot of time here. But it is pretty nice. It's just, everything's different. <laughs> so we're going underneath their airport right now. Sort of the same thing as in Atlanta, Georgia, except Atlanta, Georgia is literally a thousand times bigger. Find park 
parking. I, it's the only parking nearby where I'm picking up. And like I said, only like six parking spots there. So cross our fingers and hope. It's gonna be quarter after six by the time we get there. So we'll see, we'll see. Middle of the week, I don't know. St. LZR and then approaching destination on the right side in 20 meters. All right, let's see if uh, there's going to be parking here for us. I don't know. Let's see if I can even get in here. Yikes, everything is so tight. You have arrived at your destination on the right side. 1149 oh, Boulevard St. LZRO. Very nice. I'm gonna have to somehow get turned around here. So that I can back in. Well, what do you know, Diesel? We found a spot. Sometimes these small little truck stops are less full than the big ones. Everyone usually goes to the big ones, right? But in Montreal, I don't even know where the big ones are. And there's, I don't think there's any around Laval anywhere. There's just this little guy with how many spots? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven or eight spots. Trucker Josh got one. There we go. Right on. Then our pickup is tomorrow morning. Pretty much just around the corner. I know, Diesel. I don't think there's any food anywhere nearby here. Let's see. Oh, wait, what's that? La Station de Sports takeout and delivery. What's this? Looks like there's some restaurant around the corner here. So, one thing about these little truck stops, uh, in Canada, anyways, they're usually in like industrial zones with nothing around and the store closes at night so there's nothing here. I wouldn't want to park here in the really cold parts of winter because if my truck were to stop running and I couldn't get it going again, I'd have nowhere to go and keep myself and diesel warm. But in the summertime and fall like this, eh, it's not that much of a risk. It's just the only risk is there's no food nearby. There's gotta be a Timmy's around here somewhere. No, nothing. Well, we got food in the truck. Or we could always order a pizza. Get a pizza delivered to the truck. Have you guys ever done that? It's kind of cool. It's like for special days, you get a pizza delivered to the truck. Hmm. Well, I guess it's time for bed then. It's been kind of a... It's been a day that went completely un... Unwell. Completely not the way it was planned to go. There was another driver from a different company that was also delivering to that place in Ottawa this morning, and he was also behind now by four hours. The funny thing is, his next delivery was at the exact same place as my next delivery was, and we both called ahead and they, they unloaded us there. They stayed back for both of us, which was really nice. I guess they were waiting for the product. But now his reload got cancelled. Mine got pushed back till tomorrow. I'm lucky I can still pick mine up in the morning. But that reload is taking me home. That could have been cancelled. That would have ruined my whole trip home and I would have been stuck here for who knows how long. All because we made an appointment and someone didn't honor it. And when I say they didn't honor it, I mean like I got there at 9 a.m. and the docks were full, right? But then the docks emptied and then they filled up again. They emptied and they filled up again. 
at least six trucks were allowed to cut in front of me before they finally let me in for my 9 a.m. appointment at 12.40 p.m. So I don't know what happened. It was a bit of a frustrating day, but we did get all of our work done. And uh, not much cruising today, guys, but I hope you enjoyed it anyways. Tomorrow should be a little bit of a better day. We're gonna pick up our load and then go through scenic Northern Ontario. And this guy's got a backup beeper. At least it's not one of those really loud, annoying ones. You can hardly even hear it. <laughs> I have very strange pet peeves, I know. But hey, I have to find something to complain about. Otherwise, no one has anything to complain about in my comment section. So if there's no complaining in my comment section, I know I didn't complain enough. So there you go. Something to talk about. Tomorrow will be more interesting, guys. It'll be more fun. We'll see you later. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss tomorrow's. Thank you.